I'm here talking to John Wilkinson, who is the CEO of TMT Analysis. Um, John, can you just tell me a little bit about TMT Analysis? So one of the one of the big things we do, the sort of the core business, if you like, is is we're some of the intelligence behind a lot of the routing for two-factor authentication and one-time passcodes. So that's when, um, for instance, you, you've tried to make a payment on your credit card um, and uh, your bank wants to verify that that's you. One of the ways that they can do that is they can, they can send a message through the, um, through the telephone, telephone networks to, to check and provide a second factor check that um, you're actually the person using that device and making that payment at that time. Um, so you get your passcode over the over the the airwaves through the SMS, and then you enter it in, and then the bank uh, has, has kind of proved that it's you. We provide the the routing intelligence for that data. So if you can imagine that SMS needs to know how to get to you, and we work with most of the big providers of messaging and um, and fraud services, and provide that routing information, which allows the session the SMS to get to your phone. Now. There's an, it, on one hand, that's a that's a, a really useful um, product, um, and you know banks use it a great deal. On the other hand, there's there's some fundamental weaknesses with it and some real fraud exposures. Um, and because of all the payment services directives and the growth in SMS and two-factor authentication, um, the fraudsters have realised there's a really good opportunity in grabbing hold of both credit cards and mobile phone accounts at the same time. And then when they've got that double um, bit of intelligence on you, they can steal a, a lot of money or masquerade as you, um, usually via a, a kind of phishing attack. Um, so lots of fraudsters out there are trying to get hold of your mobile phone account. Um, and there's various ways you can, you can check um, to, to make sure, to provide extra kind of reassurance and, and uh, checks. Uh, you, you, to two-factor sure authentication, right obviously hands. extremely important. Are there any other areas in which you're working in the, in the fraudscape? But one of the other areas is using mobile intelligence um, as a kind of know your customer check. One of the really easy checks you can make, it, and, and we make for, for fintechs and banks all the time, is is there a real subscriber that sits behind this mobile number? Um, a lot of the nice um, things about mobile checks is they're incredibly fast. So if we receive a, if you think of an e-commerce site where you've typed in your name and your phone number, we can ping the network that that phone number belongs to and get a response that there's a real subscriber connected to that number within about half a second, a bit less. Um, some checks, which many people don't do yet and probably should, is just really simple things like, is this uh, a real mobile phone? Has it been um, activated for more than 24 hours, for example, is a very good fraud check um, because it's, it tends, you know, fraud tends to be pretty immediate. Um, so there's several checks you can do on a, on a customer's login, for example, to see whether or not it looks suspicious. It may, may not give you 100% it's fraudulent or it's not, but it's a kind of um, a suspicion warning. Got you. Okay, so um, who are your customers in the main? So it's internet banks, uh, fintechs, and uh, and new entrants. Uh, if you think um, credit agencies, uh, you know those types of, of providers starting to use mobile intelligence much more than they have in the past. Mobile seem to be more and more important to us. Um, we take our numbers around with us uh, for years and years. It's not completely correct, but there's an assumption that. That you, as a as a an operator in the internet, um, are going to have a mobile phone, and and therefore it's quite a good um, proxy for you, um, because the the other thing is that device isn't just a, a telephony device anymore. It's being used for multiple different attributes and, and reasons, and so if in those fraud checks you start to look at well, what's the, the phone number, but then also what's the device ID? What kind of device is it? Um, and, you, and you piece those bits together, then they can be quite strong, um, strong references to your identity.